All right, Karina baby, today is the 22nd. And it's Lottie's Goat. Lottie bought a billy goat and Butter was his name. He kicked and buttered anyone if they too near him came. Said Lottie, if you don't behave, I'll send you back again. Archie the cockroach, the, cockro the cockroach speaks. I heard a couple of fleas talking the other day. Says one come to lunch with me. I can lead you to a polygreed dog. Says the other one. I do not care what a dog's pedigree may be. Safety first is my motto. What I want to know is whether he has got a muzzle on. Millionaires and bums taste about alike to me. So he doesn't care about anything besides whether or not he has a, a muzzle on because millionaires and bums taste about the same to the flea, right? How to tell the wild animals. If ever you should go by chance to jungles in the east and if, and if there should to you advance a large and twiny beast if he roars at you and you're dying you'll know it is an asian lion or if sometime when warring round a noble wild beast greets you with black stripes on a yellow ground you'll notice if he eats you the simple wool may help you learn the Bengal tiger to discern. If strolling forth a beast you view, whose hide with spots is peppered, as soon as he has leap has has left on you, you'll know it is a leopard. Till will do no good to war with pain. He'll only lep and and lep again. If when you're walking round the yard you meet a creature there who hugs you very, very hard, be sure it is the bear. If you have any doubt, I guess, he'll give you just one more caress. Through the distinguished beast of prey, a novice might nonplus the crocodiles, you always may tell from hyenas thus hyenas come from merry smiles but if they weep they're crocodiles if the true chameleon is small the lizard sort of thing he hasn't any ears at all and not a single wing if there is nothing on the tree tis the chameleon you see the yak as a friend to the children command me the yak you will find it exactly the thing it will carry and fetch. You can ride on its back or lead it about with a string. The trotter who dwells on the plains of Tilbet, a disdain region of snow, has for centuries made a nursery pet, and surely the Tartars should know. Then tell your papa where the yak can be got, and if he is awfully rich, he will buy you the creature, or else he will not. I cannot be positive which. Next is the auto and the octopusy cat. I love octopusy cat. His arms are so long. There is nothing in nature so sweet as his song. Tis true, I'm not, I'd not touch him, no, not for a farm. If I kept at a distance, he'll do me no harm. There is a young lady whose nose. There was a young lady whose nose continually 
prospers and grows. When it grew out of sight, she explained in a fright, Oh, farewell to the end of my nose. Next to jellyfish. Who wants my jellyfish? I'm not silly fish. There was an old person whose habit is next. It's by Edward Lear. There was an old person whose habits induced him to feed upon rabbits. When he'd eaten eighteen, he turned perfectly green, upon which he relinquished those habits. The plant of the the plant of the camel. Carrier birds feed on sugar and seed. Parrots have crackers to crunch. And as for the poodles, they tell me the noodles have chickens and creams for their lunch. But there's never a question about my disdain. Anything does for me. Cats are aware, can repose in a chair. Chickens can roost upon rails. Puppies are able to sleep in a stable. And... Oysters can slumber in pails, but no one supposes a poor candle do a poor camel dozes any place does for me. Lambs are enclosed where it's never exposed. Copes are constructed for coops are constructed for hens. Kittens are treated to houses well heated. And pigs are protected by pens, but a camel, but a camel comes handy whenever it's sandy. Anywhere does for me. People would laugh if you rode a giraffe or mounted the back of an ox. If nobody's habits rode on a rabbit or tried to bestraddle a fox, but as for the camel, he's ridden by fa by families. Any load does for me. A snake is as round as a hole in the ground, and weasels are weavy and sleek, and no alligator could ever be straighter than lizards that live in a creek, but a camel all lumpy and bumpy and humpy, any shape does for me. The Song of Mr. Toad is next. The world has held great heroes as history books have, as, as history books has showed. But never a name to go down to fame compared with that of a toad. The clever man of Oxford knew all those to be known, but they none of them knew one half as such as intelligent as Mr. Toad. The animals sat on the ark and cried, their tears of, tor of, tor of torrents flowed. And was it said, there's loud, uh, there's land ahead, encouraging Mr. Toad. The army all scouted, and they marched along the road. Was it the king, or Kitchener? No, it was Mr. Toad. The queen and her ladies in waiting sat at the window and sewed. She said, look, who is that handsome man? They answered, Mr. Toad. All right, see, all right, sweetie, the next one's going to be for tomorrow. Oh, baby, I miss you. I miss you so much. You know that? Can't wait to see you. Let's do, we sit and watch the rain as it falls from the sky. And we are glad to be inside where it is warm and dry. Oh yes, I do love the rain. It keeps the earth so clean and helps the pretty flowers grow from the mountains to the streams. Oh, the grand old Duke of York had ten thousand men he marched them up to the top of the hill and then he marched them down again and when they were up they were up and when they were down they were down and when they were only halfway up they were neither up nor down lila toe then grew 
good night to you, Violet Hope, oh, may your dreams come true. We sing Violet Hope, oh, may Israel protect you throughout the night until we reach the morning light. Karina baby, I love you and I miss you so much, honey. I can't wait to see you. Can't wait to hug you, and I can't wait to bring you places and just do things with you that you want to do. Because that's important to mama. It's important that you get experiences and that you get to do things. Because you only live once, and this life is short. No matter what, even when you feel like... Even when you feel like you just want to sit down and cry. You gotta wait until the next moment in life. You gotta wait until the next thing. And it's so incredibly hard to be patient and wait. But sometimes that's just what you have to do. You just have to be patient and wait for the time to pass. And while you're waiting for that time to pass, you have to be able to be like, I'm gonna do this today and I'm gonna do that today and it's gonna have to be okay because we just have to wait. I have to wait to get to see you. I have to wait for the ability to be able to see you. Um, COVID has slowed everything down. Just know that I love you. I love you so much and nothing will ever change that. I think about you all the time and nothing will ever change that, honey. I will always love you. I had you. I waited forever for you. I can't believe I had you every single second of every single day. We were going to movies at the park. We were going to just all different types of parks in general. We were going everywhere. We were doing everything. All the seasons, all the time. We were just doing things. Because in the winter, we were going to plays. And we were going to concerts. And we were going out. We were seeing the tree lightings. Every single tree lighting that we could possibly find. We were going to the, see the fireworks on the first Friday of the month. Along with... Um, we were doing First Fridays everywhere, too. We were going to everywhere you can imagine. The wine concert series. You got to go on so many adventures all the time because that's just what Mama does. Mama likes to go on adventures. Mama likes to go out. Mama likes to go and do things. So every art festival that they had, every single play and concert that they had, every single movie in the park that they had, Mama knew about it because I was a part of 11 Mama groups so that this way I could keep you engaged with other kids. Because what we were doing is we were doing homeschooling. And so I wanted you to be a part of different groups. So there's a nature and science group that we were a part of. There was a mama's group for the town that we lived in that we were a part of, which was really great. There was a hiking group that we were a part of. There was so many groups that we were a part of. And they were just for different aspects of life. And we never really ran into anybody from, like, everyone pretty much stuck to, like, their group that they were in. And we were just in all the groups. So we got to see everybody. And it was a good thing. It's good to be integrated within your community um, because then people know you and they see you and they're like, oh, hey, you, how are you? And it's good to have a good community connection. Mama always likes, to, like, everywhere I go, I usually make a good community connection. Um, I did that with you because I wanted you to have the good community connection because you're little and you need you need uh, friends that are like family, right? Because we didn't live anywhere really all that close to our family. So we had friends that were like family. We had, you know, just so many friends that were like family. And we saw these people all the time. We got to eat with them. We got to sit with them. We got to, you know, you had so many grandmothers, like basically, because you got to sit and see them all the time. And everyone loved on you. And everyone was like, oh my gosh, you're getting so big. Like everyone loves you, honey. Everyone loves you. You were so good. You were always so good. I love you so much, honey, and I miss you. Like our papa always used to say, Mama's papa's son, papa's my moon, and you're definitely a rainbow baby. I love you, and I miss you so much. I just miss you. And no matter what, I love you, all right? No matter what anyone says to you, I don't care what anyone says to you, know that your mama will always love you. All right, God will always love you and your mama will always love you because it's unconditional love. I love you so much, honey.